¿Cómo les va? Bienvenidos a otra emisión de Filmoteca Online. Hoy vamos a ver uno de los, de los materiales más antiguos que tenemos en la Filmoteca. Está desde siempre. Eh, eh, hace tanto que está que no tengo la menor idea de quién de todos fue el que lo trajo. Eh, pero bueno, ahí está. Es, es, un, es un material de origen indio, es decir, hecho en la India. Eh, y claro que, que desafía completamente la, la, la idea más o menos arquetípica que uno tiene sobre, sobre la India a partir de las películas que uno ha visto de allí. Eh, se llama Kulu el Valle Feliz eh, y muestra un lugar eh, eh, que parece, uno lo ve en el documental y realmente parece... Eh, eh, no sé si vieron Horizontes Perdidos, ¿no? la, la, la famosa película de Frank Capra, en donde eh, bueno, Ronald Coleman encontraba eh, eh, el, el, el paraíso, el paraíso en la Tierra, un lugar en donde eh, la gente vivía muchísimos años y donde se vivía con la más absoluta y total felicidad, el ver, el ver, la verdadera sede de la alegría sin fin. Bueno, Kulu parece ser el lugar al que hay que ir para estar así, para estar contento siempre eh, eh, y reírse de cualquier pesar. Eh, como el, el documental es de la, de la década del 30, fines de los 30, eh, entonces me, me, recién me, me fui a fijar a ver si Kulu todavía existe. Y para mi sorpresa, eh, eh, en, en la Wikipedia, que no es algo en lo que yo tenga en lo que yo tenga mucha confianza, pero bueno, hay unas fotos ahí, y aparte lo primero que dice es que Kulu sigue siendo un lugar genial, buenísimo, y al que hay que visitar sin ninguna duda, lleno de templos hermosos y de gente contenta. Así que, eh, eh, con toda esa buena onda, vamos a ver Kulu el Valle Feliz. Your journey, either by narrow gauge railway to Nagrota 
and thence by road to Kulu, or directly by comfortable buses from Bataan Coat to Kulu, a distance of 175 miles. Passing through the beautiful Kangra Valley with its green highlands studded with low shrubs, the road climbs up to Bundy, the biggest town on the route. A few miles this side of the town, you get the first glimpse of the River Bias, and from now on, it is your constant companion. Mundi itself is a pretty old town. Its temples and rock carvings on the edge of the river lend a natural charm to its busy bazaar, palatial buildings, and beautiful gardens. Crossing the Bias at Bondo by a suspension bridge, the road, blasted through solid overhanging rocks, and carved across slipping hillsides, follows the course of the river at varying heights. The tumultuous roaring river confined in the rocky gorge is an awe-inspiring spectacle. And look at the way these hill folk cross the river on the Jula. It must be a thrilling experience. One little slip and a fatal fall. At the end of the gorge, the valley of Kulu opens out and its rocky margins merge into sloping hillsides and terraced fields. And lo, we reach Bajara, the first village with its historic temple in the Kulu Valley. A further nine miles through the widening fields brings you to the Maidan of Kulu, the principal town of the valley. Kulu is the basin of the river Bias. Enclosed by high mountain ranges, the river flows in the center of the valley, now deep and smooth, now foaming down rocky rapids in channels dotted with elms and poplars. The river is the lifeline of Kulu. It not only makes the rich soil richer, but carries huge logs of timber from the jungles to the plains. The upper portion of the Bias Valley is perhaps the prettiest and the richest part of the Himalayas. Along this stretch of 24 miles, lie the extensive fruit orchards which produce some of the finest pears, apples, persimmons and cherries in the world. Both Rison and Katrain are excellent trout fishing centers. Anglers from far off places come here to fish and are seldom disappointed. Oh, this is a good one, a pound I believe. Not very far from here is the breeding place for the trout. And a little above it on the hillock is the model house of busy bees making honey for the hillmen. Dotted along the hills of the valley are tiny hamlets containing about half a dozen rustic houses, generally tower-shaped, with two or three stories, each having one room with a wooden veranda thrown round the upper story, crowned by a sloping roof of slate or wooden shingle. The ground floor is used for stalling cattle, while the family lives in the upper story. With few needs and fewer worries, these simple folks lead happy and contented lives. The Kulu women are as hard-working as they are pretty. Uninhibited, they go about working in the fields, while the men have the harder duties in Himalayan pastures exposed to various vicissitudes of the weather. Men, women and children all employ their leisure hours in spinning wool, for the rigors of winter demand heavy clothing. Spinning wool on the Tuckley is a whole-time job in Kulu. Manufacture of pattus or blankets is a profitable industry in the valley. And after a number of washings, the pattus become soft and comfortable. Kulu has a lot of water, and people make full use of it. Indigenous water mills, or garats, are seen all over the valley to grind their corn. And the more enterprising among them, have set up some such improved machinery for husking rice. Kulu is a hiker's paradise. For the mountaineers, there are lofty peaks to conquer and snow-covered passes to cross. For the less adventurous, there are lovely treks all over the valley. From Naga to Manali is a lovely bridle path through the most fertile part of the valley. Rich rice crops extending for miles, blending with sprouting verdure, create harmonious effects of gold and green. And as you walk past happy men and women, reaping the rich harvest against the broad silver sheet of the snow-clad Himalayan peaks, 
You wish to keep on rambling here forever. Passing through the prosperous village of Jagatsuk, the road crosses two rapid flowing rivulets, and you reach Manali, the picturesque summer resort. Here, in the dense forest of John Deodars, is the famous Dongri Temple, built nearly 700 years ago. Manali is the starting point of the ancient trade route, crossing the Rutan Pass to Lahore and Ladakh. Marching along the Bias to Koti is a pleasant walk. The road throughout is crowded with sheep and shepherds on their way to the trade marts of Kulu from the rich pastures of Lahore. Loaded pack animals, driven by Mongolian featured men and women, slowly wind their way to the rich valley of the Bias from the windswept plains of Ladakh. After a number of windings, the road ascends towards the top of the pass, near the crest of which the Bias has its birth. With a steep drop of more than 40 feet, it gets a powerful start on its long journey of 350 miles. In the month of October, along this route are carried wool, numbers and blankets from far off Himalaya regions to the great Dussehra Fair at Kulu, where they find a ready sale. In this veil of color and beauty, the most attractive festival is the Dussehra, when various devtas of the valley gather together in the spacious Deodar Fringe Maidan at Kulu to honor Raghunathji, the presiding deity. Every road and path leading to the fairground is thronged with gaily dressed men, women, and children, bearing in procession the devta of their hamlet. On the opening day, Raghunathji is placed in a special rat or chariot, liberally decorated with colored draperies and flowers. Accompanied by all the attendant deities and their standard bearers, and wildly playing bands, the chariot gradually moves towards the vast Maidan, and the people of Kulu, including the chiefs of Rupi and Sangri, pay their homage to the deity of the valley. The Mela provides a great opportunity for buying and selling locally woven homespun cloth, shawls, blankets, wool, etc. The religious dances are a regular feature of all such Melas, while the acrobatic feats of the Laholis and Tibetans greatly add to the fun of the fair. Dancing by men, mostly dressed in their traditional costumes, is both a pleasure and a duty, especially so when the fair bells watch them slowly gyrating to the music of a favorite dance tune. Thus ends a week of mirth and merriment, leaving happy memories and rousing fond hopes for the coming year. <laughs>